In the original versions of the story, Saunier supposedly found his famous parchments in a hollow altar pillar, which he set up here in his church garden. Well, this is a fiberglass copy. When I first saw the pillar, I was intrigued by the fact that Sonia had, in a sense, vandalised the ancient stone by having additional writing carved onto it. Penitence, penitence. Mission 1891. He seems to have been a sensitive and educated man, and it was a wanton thing to do to such a precious relic from the past. I wondered why he'd done it. And then it occurred to me that by putting writing onto it, he'd given it a top and a bottom. Now there was only one right way up. I wondered if he was making us look at it wrongly. At the time, I knew nothing about the art of the Visigoths, from whose period the stone dates. But when I checked, I found that the cross with pendant Alpha and Omega was a recurrent theme. And here it is, the right way up. Saunier is indeed making us look at it wrongly. One can only wonder why. But is this really where he found the parchments? The pillar, we were told, was hollow, but when it was turned right way up a few years ago, it proved to be nothing of the sort. There's just this small depression which took the locking tenon of the altar stone. No, he didn't find them here, if he found them at all. Nothing is certain in the Saunier story. It's all hearsay. Now, the village shows this wooden pillar as the place where the parchments were supposed to be hidden. But that's not certain either. Here's another little oddity. O oh Marie, conçu sans péché, priez pour nous. O oh Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us. Why are the M and the A overlaid? Did the stonemason just make a spelling mistake and then correct it? Unlikely. But just remember, whatever explanation you come up with is going to be pure guesswork. We just don't know. But there are other interesting things to see in this church garden. This calvaire. It was erected in 1897 to commemorate the visit of a bishop. But as always, it's the insignificant little details that are interesting. These simple, pious phrases, for instance. Christ conquers, Christ rules, Christ reigns, and behind things become less simple. Christ defend, A-O-M-P-S. When that mysterious organisation, the Priory of Zion, first raised its head, I suggested that AOMPS might stand for Antiquus Ordo Mysticusque Prioratus Zionis. Christ defend the ancient and mystical order of the Priory of Zion. Another suggestion was Ab Omni Malo Plebem Suam, Christ defend his people from all ill. Well, you pay your penny, as they say, and you make your choice. When Sonia laid out the church garden, he built a little grotto. This is a recent reconstruction of it. The stone is rather unusual. You don't find it very often hereabouts. It's said that Sonia took the trouble to carry all these stones up here himself. Or perhaps another hearsay story. Not many people notice the little bench that I'm sitting on. Another of Saunier's mysterious legacies. Just look. K, X, S, L, X. And what are we to make of that? I haven't the faintest idea. Just remember that if you arrive at an interpretation, it's again going to be nothing more than a guess. This little structure is the Reposoir des Morts, where the coffins are placed before the funerals. Saunier had his photograph taken here one afternoon with some friends. But let's go into the cemetery.
This is the ossuaire, where were buried any bones found when digging a new grave. When I first came here in 1971, lying there was the gravestone of Marie de Blanchefort, supposedly effaced by Béranger Saunier. It wasn't very long after I first photographed it that vandals came and began to break pieces from it. Now the shattered remnant has been moved into the presbytery for safety. It was said to have been the gravestone of Marie de Blanchefort. This supposedly had the inscription effaced by Saunier. It doesn't matter whether the inscription was on the stone or not. What matters and what makes me angry is that mindless souvenir and treasure hunters can wreak such havoc. Disgraceful it may be, but it's not the worst of the acts of vandalism you'll see here, more's the pity. But let's go and pay our respects to Béranger Saunier himself. His grave is somewhat grander now than when I first saw it. There was no bas-relief, no chain, no raft of cement, just the simple cross and the stone cracked across and covered with dust and leaves. Beside him lies his faithful servant Marie de Narnaud, who died as recently as 1953, and Noël Corbu who bought the property from her and turned it into an hotel. More oddities. Have you ever seen a date written like this? Is it the eighth month, August? But August doesn't end B-R-E. Could it be October? And here's another one. Curious. But when we get to Rennes les Bains, we'll find the same game being played, but perhaps with more meaning. One last detail here. Now, when I first saw this cast iron cross, the stone one was wired across it at the front so that I couldn't see the details. But I noticed a hollow shape at the back. The cross, symbol of the crucifixion. We're used to the image of Jesus hanging from it, but here we have the Virgin and Child. I draw no conclusions from this, but in this particular context, it gives food for thought. We are in the land of the Catars. The Albigensians believed that the world was not created by the god of good. All physical matter, they believed, was the work of Rex Mundi, lord of the earth, the devil. It followed, therefore, that Jesus, who was created by God, could not be physical. He must be pure spirit, with only the semblance of matter. From this it followed that he couldn't be crucified. And so, in oversimplistic terms, the Qatars rejected Christ crucified, but they accepted Christ the son of Mary. When we look at the history of the Albigensian Crusade, we know that it ended in March 1244. But of course, so powerful a faith and a belief couldn't just switch off like a light. It must have lingered on down through the generations. Now, it may seem a fanciful thought, but could this cross be an expression of that long-forgotten faith? A rejection of Christ crucified and an acceptance of Christ the Son of Mary. <laughs>